and uh, we're going to talk about EPC conversions mastery. EPC conversions mastery. And uh, just as a way of overview, um, as I said, EPCs are not normally discussed or taught. It's, it's one of those things that you'll see it when a JV is talking about a product that they want you to promote. You'll see it when someone is talking about whether or not their product was a success. And they'll say that they had X number of EPCs. And you might have heard that, right? Um, and also, um, it, it, it seems easy to understand right on his face, right? That's what you would think. Um, it's, uh, it's earnings per click, right? That's on its face. You and I would feel like that's exactly what it is, and so what's there really to understand? But what isn't really explained is how do you get the best EPC? It would seem then obvious. Well, I need to sell as much as I can, and I need to sell as much as I can to every one person that comes to the page. That seems logical. But again, even though it's one of those things that a JV will make a – I, I will, will make a decision about whether or not they're going to promote your product or not, even though it is something that a, a product creator will say um, is a measure of their success. There isn't a lot of discussion about how you get the best EPC, and there's a little more to it than get the highest best the, the highest possible price. Um, what are the factors influencing in EPCs? We're going to talk about that um, because. You and I, if we're ever going to launch products consistently, we have to understand this. Um, EPC does influence your launch results um, because the fact of the matter is the higher that you say or the higher that they can look and see that your EPCs are, then people who do not know you will come on board. And I think that's more important than anything else. You're probably going to have the case where if somebody knows you well and they think that your product is going to be worthy based on who you are, they might be willing to promote for you. But there are going to always be people that will can't, will take a look at your statistics and say, you know what, I'm going to promote that even if I don't know you. And often that can, that, that can be the difference between a successful launch and a, and a non-successful launch. And the other thing is, with a high EPC, you can influence a decision on product of the day, right? Whether you're doing that on JVZoo, Warrior Plus, or even JVZ, JV Share. If maybe you don't have as many sales as someone else, or your sales are lower than you might consider otherwise, then you can actually influence your position as product of the day if your EPCs are high, or if your EPCs are highest on a particular day. Um, and when you do that, um, what you have is a snowball effect, right? You don't have to be known to be product of the day, right? Believe it or not. And I know that that may be a very popular way of looking at, at, at how those things are chosen. Oh, well, then those guys often choose their friends or they, they choose somebody who's really popular. And often what's happening is when you see someone choose something that's going to be product of the day, what they're trying to choose is what they feel as if they're going to get the most from a mailing on their behalf. Right? And when they mail something, they want to make sure that they're going to make the most possible that they possibly can. And the way that they do that is they look at the APCs, right? And so this, this whole idea of influencing your APCs, um, gets you closer to being noticed as product of the day or at least gets you in the conversation. And this causes a snowball effect because other people then come to want to promote for, promote your product, even if they don't know you. Right. So if you're with me so far, please put number one in the question box. If you get the whole, if you get the whole picture of the, of the importance of it, at least right now. Right. So if you, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you get it. Okay. So ultimately, um, it's going to help you to grow your list. Right. Um, because if you actually, um, get to the point where, um, your, you know, you have, you have more people promoting. They're bringing in different people to buy your product. You're going to grow your list through product sales. And again, one of the best ways for you to grow your list is often counterintuitive. You think you've got to have a big list in order to have successful launch, but actually a successful launch will really determine whether or not your list is going to grow because people join your list when someone actually, when you sell a product and that person gets end up, ends up on your after sale autoresponder. So again, this whole idea. Of, of, of high EPCs not only will it help you to have higher product sales, but even if you gave away 100% of your, of, your, of your profit, you'll be able to grow your list that way because other JVs are going to be traffic to your page ultimately to buy your product. Right now, 
What are we going to cover today when we talk about EPCs? Well, we're going to talk about why it's important. We've done that a little bit uh, so far. I want to talk a little bit about de how dependent it is on your sales funnel, right? So we're not we're, – we're, we're getting into – probably what's going to be a little more advanced of a topic, but it still is going to be something that you're going to be able to take and, and, and implement immediately in, in your business if you're launching anything. Um, we're going to determine, we're going to talk about how you determine EPC, the factors influencing it, and how you manage EPCs. And we're also going to talk about the snowball effect, which I just introduced to you right now. So let's talk about the importance of understanding it, right? Because again, for a long time, this is something that personally I ignored and personally did not deal with. And I'm going to show you why that was probably not so smart of a thing to do. Obviously, on the face, definition of EPC is earnings per click, right? And what does that mean? The formula for earnings per click is obvious. I'm going to take the amount that you earned, divide that by the total traffic, however you determine that. And if you go to look at a particular product or the statistic on a particular product in a particular affiliate network, they're going to, they're going to constitute that differently. Some people determine a click based on the, 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 uh, the page being revealed. Some people base that on a, a literal click. It doesn't really matter. What you need to focus on is, right, the amount of earnings divided by total traffic as it is determined by that network. Right. So if you're with me so far, please put the number two in the question box if you get it. Right, that's basically earnings per click. Now, we basically are trying to determine um, how much are we earning every time somebody clicks a link and visits. And, and that, that's obviously going to determine whether or not I should promote a product or not, not whether or not I like you or not, not whether or not I think that, uh, you, you know, you've been a nice guy or now a nice, uh, nice lady. Right? If I'm going to determine based on um, how much I'm going to make if I send your offer, assuming that your offer is a good fit for uh, our community or our subscriber community, then I'm going to want to promote just based on that. If I assume that what you've done is high quality, I assume that it's going to be a good fit. I want to start then looking, well, how much am I going to make on average if I send out your, uh, your, your, your offer and I get, let's say, 100 visitors to the page? For example, right, if you earn $200 and 100 people click, then your EPCs are, are going to be $2, uh, $2, right? $2 EPCs. Now, if you, if your EPC is low, uh, marketers are going to be reluctant to promote. They don't know you personally. Right. Now, again, if you're trying to bring in, and, and, and often there's a question that you might hear being asked as internet marketers is, well, how do I break in? Right. How can I start getting people who maybe uh, I don't know personally or how can I how can I get started if I'm not a big gun? And one of the ways that you can get started if you are a big gun is you can make sure that what you market, right, what you bring to market has an uh, has a high EPC. Even if you're not getting a lot of clicks at the very beginning, you want to make sure that the EPCs are high. And it is one of the things that says about your product, hey, you know what? It's going to be worth your, <laughs> your time to have this product promoted because of the EPCs. Now, now even when somebody promotes for you, they may not be willing to promote for you again, um, you know, more than once if the EPCs are going to be low. Right. And so and so, again, what you're what you're doing is you are you are giving people an objective standard as to whether or not they're going to promote what it is that you are selling. Now, this means that you can influence two things to affect the EPCs. There are two things that you can do. Number one, if you can affect the amount of traffic coming to a particular page. Number two, if you can affect the amount earned. And we're going to talk about that here in this session. Now, EPC is not a hard and fast rule, right? It doesn't mean that automatically as a as an affiliate that if I send 100 visitors, I'm going to make $200, right? That's not what this means. What it does mean is it means that it depends on what kind of traffic I send to a particular offer. So in other words, I've got to make sure that if I'm going to send people to an offer, it's got to be relevant to whatever the offer is. But in general... That if I send the same kind of traffic to a particular offer and it is relevant, I can expect that if I send 100 visitors, I should be able to make $200. But I'm going to tell you why this number is, is not exactly what it seems. 
Now, there are two perspectives on the amount earned. Now, the first thing is we can look at this number, EPCs, based on the amount that the affiliates are earning. And number two, we can look at it based on the overall sales number. Right. So in other words, there are two ways that EPCs really matter. Number one, it's just for the affiliates. In other words, an affiliate sends traffic. If they send 100 visitors, the affiliate's going to expect $200 or the overall picture. That's affiliates plus what you send. That's affiliates plus SEO traffic. That's affiliates plus people who are curious. That if all of that equals um, a, a particular number, we can look at EPCs in that way. But we're going to focus on focusing on, on, on trying to affect affiliate EPCs. That's what we want to affect. We want to make sure that the affiliate EPCs are high because, again, what it says to another affiliate is it's worth your time to promote this product. Doesn't mean they're going to go out. Doesn't mean they're going to do that right away. Doesn't mean they're going to do that right off the bat. Doesn't mean they're going to like us. It does mean that if we have a product with a relatively high EPC, then that we have an objective measure to say our product is worth the time. Right now, when you look at this number inside of JVZ Warrior Plus, you're not looking at a true number. This is what I really want to kind of bring home to you, that even when someone says, I have $2 EPCs, and they look at it inside of JVZ, that's not necessarily the exact EPC. And I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to tell you how you can make sure that you get the highest possible number when you're going to put a product together. Number one, because being influenced by a couple of things. Number one, um, it's going to be influenced by your sales funnel. Right. So in other words, if you have the kind of sales funnel where someone buys one thing, they're likely to buy three, that if you have a high percentage of those people or you have the kind of funnel where someone's going to come and they're going to see what it is that 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 you have on the front end, and they're going to like the other things that you have in there, then you're probably going to have a higher EPC. I mean, it's going to be influenced by affiliate commissions. Right. That's the amount earned. It's also going to be influenced by your email strategy, which is traffic. And it's also going to be influenced by your pre-launch strategy. We're going to talk about all four of those things in the session. Now, one thing that I do want to kind of bring to your attention is that we're not looking to game the system by changing the NPCs. So we're not trying to game this thing. Right. We want to make sure we have a high APC, but we're not trying to trick anybody. We're not trying to fool anybody. We're not trying to 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 make it a, make our product appear to be something that it is not. What we want to do is make sure that it reflects truly what it is that we have uh, put put before people. And we want to make sure it's a true reflection of what we're asking affiliates to take a look at. Now, so let's talk about um, how EPCs are influenced by your sales funnel. Now, there are going to be two elements um, that, that you're going to remember when you're creating your front-end offer, right, as well as your upsells. You and I have to make sure that whenever we're creating our front end offer, um, we, we, we really need to do this. And, and this isn't, this does not come natural. If you want to try to influence your, your EPCs and you want to try to make sure that your sales funnel d does, does extreme, it does as much as it possibly can, you're going to need to make sure that you try to do your sales funnel before you create your product. Right? And that's counterintuitive because um, it's going to help you to answer the right questions about your front end product with an eye toward what you'll create for the back end. Right. So so what do we mean by that? Um, you also want to make sure that you stick with the same theme throughout your product funnel. So let me let me let's take a step back here. When you when you when you when you start out creating a product, what typically happens is um, you, you have something that you're trying to show someone how to do or you're putting together some kind of software program or you're putting together some kind of content package. And what happens is, you know, you'll get to a point and you'll say to yourself, well, hey, well, maybe what I need to do is I need to break this up into two pieces so that I can give people um, so I can have an upsell for people to buy. And really, you want to start thinking about that even before you start creating and not after. Right. It's almost too late to start thinking about a sales funnel once you have started the creation process, because you're going to have to think in a logical pattern. I'm going to tell you what that logical pattern is here. One of the things, the other things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to stick with the same theme throughout our product funnel. Um, what happens is when we when we stick with the right theme, in other words, the, the person who buys a product, they bought the product for a reason, right? Maybe the theme of our product was, I'm going to make it easier for you to be an authority in your niche. Everything in your product funnel then has to help that person to do that. 
If your theme is, I'm going to help you to earn higher CPA commissions, then everything in the funnel must help that person to do that. If your, 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 the theme of your product funnel is, I'm going to help you to use content, I'm going to help you to use PLR to make more sales, then everything in your funnel has to be able to do that. Everything in your funnel must lead to that goal. So everything on your funnel has to be on to the same theme, and that's really one of the things you can do to make sure that your, your sales funnel is going to be consistent. For example, you're going to be solving a problem with webinars, and your upsell should not only focus on the word webinars, but also the same problem. So in other words, here's what happens. Let's say that we have a webinar product. Typically, people will put together um, a sales funnel, right? And in some cases, the, 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 the second part or the third part of the funnel we about, will be about webinars, but will not necessarily help the person toward the goal, right? And so what we've got to do is we've got to determine what the goal of the funnel is, what the goal for the customer is, and everything in the funnel, whether or not it has the word webinar in it, must help the customer toward the goal. Now, if you get that, please put the number two in the question box so to understand what I'm talking about there. So the theme has to be the same. Now, when you, when you, when you first start, um, when you first start creating, um, your first term is going to be how you're going to actually be able to sell the product. The first, the front end product is going to solve the primary need. Right? It's going to solve the primary needs. So whatever it is that, that brought your customer to um, the goal, they're, they're going to they're gonna get that solved by the front-end product. In some cases, you may need to split that into two pieces. Um, in other words, you're going to split that into the basic for most users and then the advanced for more serious users. And you have to almost do that at the beginning. Right? You, 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 it, because if you do it after the fact, the break is not going to come naturally and it's not going to be logical. But if you do it knowing that you're creating a basic product in the very beginning and you're going to get someone to a basic goal, then when you create the back end or you create a more advanced version, you will know that at the very beginning. The front end offer should always have mass appeal as really it's going to be designed to get the maximum number of people to the particular door for a particular subject. And what you gotta do is on the front end, you've gotta show a lot of value, right? You've gotta solve the primary problem. And um, you, you've, gotta, you've gotta then transition um, um, to, to the upsell and then, the, and then link the rest of the funnel to that very first offer. Let's now talk about um, uh, EPCs influenced by affiliate commissions, right? EPCs influenced by affiliate commissions. Um, now our ultimate goal is gonna be to make sure um, that offers portrayed honestly and competitively, knowing that JVs have choices over where they can and are willing going to be willing to promote, right? So we're going to try to influence the, the 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 JVs to come and promote based on what we offer them. And so here's going to be the rule of thumb, right? Affiliates are basically typically looking for at least a one dollar EPC, right? That's that that that, and again, that's not a hard and fast rule, but that's typically what they're going to be looking for. If you're there at a minimum. And your product is converting at at least a $1 EPC, you're in the conversation. doesn't mean that if you're not doing that, that you're not in a conversation. But in general, the affiliates are typically going to be looking at a $1 EPC. Does everybody get that? Right? So, so, so again, that, that's the watermark. That's a, that is a benchmark. Again, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it is a benchmark that will tell you whether or not someone's going to look at what you have and say, okay, you know what? This is going to be worth my time. Then also, as an affiliate, you should be thinking about that. Am I going to promote this product or not? Well, one of the ways that you can look at it and tell is if you send the, the same kind of traffic that, that the, offer is, uh, the offer is promoting, right? If you send the same kind of traffic, what can you expect for all of the visitors you're going to send? Right? You should evaluate that as an affiliate. But again, from a product creation standpoint, you're typically going to be looking at $1. And so the question is going to be how you can influence the amount earned from the affiliate perspective. Right? So, that, so that, that's going to be the question. Um, one of the things that you can do is you can increase the affiliate uh, uh, commission. Right? So you can, you, can, you can increase the affiliate commission from um, 50% to, to, to 100%. Now let's go through a few numbers here. So any offers that are going to be less than a hundred, uh, 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 less than ten dollars, you should probably think to offer a hundred percent commission. Right? Again, what you're trying to do is influence the EPCs. You want them to earn more, and you want that to show up again as a practice is going to be worth your time. So again, under ten dollars, typically 
you should be offering 100% commission if you can. Right now, if you plan to, uh, if you plan to launch an offer price, uh, lower than $7, you want to keep this in mind, um, your sales copy is going to have to convert extremely well. I'm going to tell you why here. Because you'd need to have an offer converting at at least 14% in order to get the $1 EPC. Right? That's, that's why, you know, if you, if you're going to go below $7, you, you've really got to be giving people 100%. And if you're going to go below $7, you've got to have something that's really, really, really going to convert. Right? You're going to have to convert at least 14% on the front end for people to see your offer at $1 EPC. Now, again, I know that was a little tricky in terms of the number, right? Um, okay, so Jim is asking what the 14% means. The 14% means that um, the number of, uh, uh, of, of let's say, um, uh, visitors, right? It's your conversion rate. So it's, it's going to be the number of people who are buying versus the number of people who are coming, right? So so if you have 100 visitors, 14 people are actually going to make a purchase, right? So so that, that's generally what we mean by, by the 14%. So you've got to have a 14% conversion rate. So again, I mean, if you take a, a dollar di- uh, divided by seven, you were talking about, talking about 14%. Now, um, w- 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 and, so, and so one of the ways that we can increase that percentage of people who are going to buy is we can pre-sell. Right. So in other words, before we actually have a launch, we can start telling people what it's actually going to be and how they can actually get it. So 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 again, even if you don't want to pay attention to the numbers, right, one of the things that you and I have to try to do is we want to try to increase the level at which increase the amount that people are earning. And we can do that by pre-selling. And what do I mean by that? Um, Now. The, 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 when, when you, when you're, when you're seeing conversion rates at higher than, than 14%, one of the things that we can assume is that the traffic is going to be filtered, right? That we, we can assume the traffic is being filtered. Um, and, and that's not going to necessarily be applicable to every kind of launch. So example, um, if, if, if you, if you, if you've got a $17 product in general, you want to offer at least seven seventy five percent commission. If you've got a $27 product, you probably want to offer something like a 60% commission, again, minimum, right? Or yeah, or that's a minimum, you, you probably. And then uh, if you're talking about 37 to 197, you're probably talking about 50%. And again, that's so that we can hit our number of $1 EPC, right? Does that make sense? So again, so 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 if, if your, your product's going to be $17, you probably want to offer at least 75%. Um, if your product's gonna be twenty-seven dollars, you probably want to offer at least sixty percent. Uh, if your product's gonna be thirty-seven to one ninety-seven, you probably want to offer at least fifty percent in terms of commission. Right? Again, so so again, the, these numbers not random. The, the numbers are trying to help you to get to the point where you're likely to earn a one-dollar EPC. Um, you know, if I can increase the amount earned, I can increase the EPCs for affiliates. Um, the, the, the question is going to come up and you're going to get this question from time to time and the affiliate's going to come to you and they're going to say, hey, can, can you bump me as an affiliate, right? And they're going to say, basically, um, can you give me a higher percentage than uh, whatever? So if I'm, if I'm offering 50, 60% of my $27 product, what the affiliate's coming to say is, hey, I've got a really big list and I'm probably going to be doing you a favor by mailing for you. So can you give me a higher percentage? Can you give me a 70% um, on, on your $27. And they're going to ask you for that. And the question is going to arise, well, should I do that, right? Should I, should I give them a higher EPC? I mean, should I give them a higher percentage? And, and, uh, basically, um, if, if, if you, if you have a case where someone else, uh, you know, where they, where, where someone else finds out about that or they talk to someone else, it could cause conflict among your affiliates. Um, it is a personal decision. But um, is not something that you have to do. But in some cases, you may say yes to an affiliate to do that in order to get them to promote at all. And what's, what what I have found is that some affiliates will ask you that upfront, right? They'll they'll ask you just by um, just as part of habit. Um, they'll ask you, hey, can you bump me? Right? They don't they don't know whether or not you're going to say no or yes or, or whatever the case is. And in in some cases, they're going to promote for you anyway. But they will ask you for a higher percentage, and you can run into problems with other affiliates if someone else finds out about it. Now, theoretically, no one else should find out about it, but you will get asked that. Um, 
And yes, you're going to make less money when that happens, right? So, so, so if you, if you pay me, um, 75% versus 50%, um, every time somebody makes a sale, then you're going to pay me out 75% of the price. Then yeah, you're going to, you're going to make less. But the way that you kind of make the decision is based on, well, how many sales is this person going to bring me? How much traffic is this person going to bring me? They're going to bring me a lot of traffic. And you're pretty confident they're going to send the email out to your their entire list. They're going to bring a bunch of visitors. They're going to get you a bunch of sales. You might be willing to say, you know what, I'll pay you a little more on every sale. But just know that um, you 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 are then giving someone something different that you're not giving that you're not giving to everybody else. And again, it it, it really does really depend on it remaining you between you and that affiliate. Right, and 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 Jim makes the point that uh, the other thing that you should be getting is you get, you should be getting more buyers to your email list. You know, anytime that you actually decide to pay a hundred percent commissions on a particular offer, what you're actually doing is you're actually paying someone to help you to build your list. Right. So another instead of paying someone, let's say you're, you're instead of paying, let's say uh, Facebook ads, you're paying an affiliate to bring you traffic. You're paying an affiliate to help you to build your list. And so, and so you can, you can look at it that way so that even if you pay out, how many of you all have seen offers where you've seen the affiliate pay out 100% on the front end and 100% on the back end? Or how many of you all have ever seen that? So if you've seen that, put the number one in the question box. If you haven't seen that, put the number two in the question box. Okay, so, 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 so it, it, it does come from time to time, and I'm not recommending that you do that, but you can do that if you're starting and you're trying to entice people that would not want to promote for you otherwise to come to what it is you're doing. You can then say, you know what, um, I can offer you 100% of the front end and 100% of the back end. And what you're trying to do is you're, it's, it's a it's a list building strategy, right? Because again, the, the more sales that they that they make, right? The, the, the obviously the, the 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 bigger that your list is actually going to get. My personal position is long term, you want to treat all your affiliates the same. You are going to get asked that, but um, I, personally, I have resisted that. And and uh, and when I have, I will then just do something uh, to say that I did. Right? Someone says, "Well, can you bump me?" And I'll say, "Okay, well, I bump you from fifty to fifty-five percent." Right? So sometimes it is a, I mean, you know, it it, it, it is sometimes it is an ego thing. And someone wants to say, well, you know, I got a higher percentage or they feel like they've been in the marketplace for a little while longer. They deserve a little more Then you can say, you know, OK, yes, I will bump you. And then um, you, you can you can bump them by a five five percent. Um, Jim's question is, have you resisted treating them the same or have you resisted bumping them? I resisted um, bumping them or I've resisted that. Typically, if somebody asks me and I know they're going to bring a lot of traffic, um, I will. But but one thing is for certain, what I have found that if you if you agree to bump somebody once, you're probably going to bump them for the rest of their time promoting for you, right? Because they're going to ask you for they're going to ask you to bump them again, right? They're going to ask you to bump them no matter how experienced you get. They're going to ask you to bump them no matter how long you've been in the market. Once you do it once, and so you 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 want to be careful about you know saying yes to it. And you, you might even want to say, you know, to start with, right? If you've got a great product, you've already got a high EPC, you're, you're, I'm not saying that you're doing somebody a favor by having them, by allowing them to promote, but, but really and truly, when you've put together a great offer and they're going to make money from it, you're, you're not cheating them by not bumping them, right? You're not cheating it. Um, yeah, yeah. And Jim says, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to, they're going to expect special privileges and they are. Right. And so and so, again, I mean, you, you, you want to be careful about whether or not you're going to do that the first time. You want to be careful about whether or not that's going to be what you are going to be characterized by. And, and I and I've just found that if you if you say, well, no, you know what, uh, uh, you know, either, uh, uh, you, you know, I, I try to do that. You know, I try to be fair to everybody. Um, you know, everybody has asked. Sometimes what I have said in the past is, hey, I've already had three people ask me and I've said no to them. So I can't say yes to you also. Right. And so what happens is sometimes um, you say no to someone, they'll respect you. Right. So if you if you if you say yes to them every time, um, they're going to expect it every time. There's a happy medium between there. Right. So you have to kind of be careful about whether or not you're going to say yes to somebody 
um, the first time and then every time. Um, and, and you also, when you say no to, 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 to treating one affiliate differently, then you really do preserve good relationships over time. Um, you know, there are such things as syndicates and other things like that. And I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is basically, you know, you post your offer and you say you're going to pay affiliates a certain amount and then you're going to give somebody else a special deal. That erodes a little bit of trust. So again, just, just be careful about that, even though what you're doing is, when, when you when you when you when you give somebody a higher percentage, you can actually uh, increase your EPCs, and some people will do that to increase the EPCs. Okay, you can influence uh, your EPC by email, um, and we're talking about specifically to our market. All the traffic that you're going to get on your offer is going to be influenced by email. So, um, you 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 don't want to make your JV tools an afterthought. Right. So you don't want to make them into something that you think about after the fact. You want to give them good emails. Um, and depending on what kind of list they have, I mean, you can let's say they have a software list or a PLR list or make money online, um, info product or a hard sell or list building. You want to try to take that into consideration if you're going to write emails out or email swipes out for them ahead of time. Right. So 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 if you're if you're going to have lots of people coming to your page to promote and they're going to need help writing their email, you want to give them that email up front, but you want to do it from different angles. This is why you do it, because you want them to be successful in promoting your product because it's going to affect your EPCs and it's going to help you with the snowball effect. Right. So 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 again, you don't want people to promote and send traffic to your offer and not be successful. You want them to be successful. It's not enough to get people to promote. You want them to have a good email campaign, and you can help them by writing emails ahead of time. Nobody knows your product as be better than you do. Uh, no one knows how to promote your product um, in a way that's going to make sense to people based on what's in it other than you. Again, I'm not going to take the time to, uh, to, to understand your product as well as you do, you will understand it, and so you want to write these emails ahead of time. Well, I'm talking about the email swipe. So again, yep, that's that's right, Jim. So so what you're trying to do is you're trying to say, well, who could be promoting my product? Right? Is it going to be somebody who's who's going to be uh, a PLR vendor? Right? If they're a PLR vendor, what's the benefit to people in, on their list? If you have a hard sell uh, uh, offer, or you have someone who's whose whole uh, this is built on the, the, the theme of list building. What can you do so that the, the email they write is going to be based on list building? You are trying to basically write these emails to help them to write good emails to their people so that they'll convert better, right? Um, yeah, so, so Jim says, I've heard people are too lazy to write uh, their own uh, emails for someone else's product. Um, yeah, um, he, he, here's what happens, right? Um, Typically, uh, what I have found is that, um, you, you know, I, I've, I've suggested that if you're going to start an affiliate promotion, you need to start two days ahead, right? And 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 that's not always going to be be the case. Sometimes, you, you know, you won't find out about an offer until the day of. And so if you find out about something the day of, you, you don't have time to figure out what the product is about. You don't have time to do a, a, a comprehensive review. So you're going to need some help, right? And so, and so. And so it, it, it is a, is a timing issue more than anything else. So, so because people are busy and because they don't find out about things sometimes at the last minute, then you, you, you help them by giving them an email that they can write, that they can change. Now, again, hopefully you're going to have to tell them not to send out the same email that you just gave them, but you've got to give them some help so that when they actually sit down to construct their email, they have the right idea that's going to help them to write a good email. Um, and basically, it's a lot of work, right? It's a lot of work to, to provide swipes to fit a particular audience, several different audiences. Um, but again, you know your product better than anybody. And um, if, if, you, if you just give a general swipe, um, you don't have any influence over the EPCs. And, and what's going to happen is people will then send out a general email. They're going to have low EPCs, and you don't get the snowball effect. Um, what you're trying to do is you're, you're, you're trying to um, give the JV some confidence, right? Um, and, if you, and, if you, and, if you, and if you don't do that, um, you're, you're, you're probably wasting your time by putting swipes together in the first place, 
right? So you want to make sure you write swipes that are going to be based on different audiences so somebody can take it for their audience and then use it then to put together a good email. All right, JV should be able to come to your page and pick and choose. And you can write swipes based on your bonuses also, right? Theirs or yours. Um, and, you know, look, some people don't even want content emails, right? Some people just, just send a straight sales email, and that's why you include one uh, that's called the hard sell, right? So basically, if you were to put a hard sell on your product, you want to write that email also. Um, and uh, some people uh, would prefer to have just a hard sell, right? And so you want to put one of those together also. Um, you can influence your EPCs by pre-launch. Um, before the launch, you can do some kind of sales presentation or webinar. Um, you can do an FB Live, or you can do a YouTube Live, or you can do some kind of webinar. Um, the traffic that you do, it's going to need to be super targeted, um, and, and you can do that, and you can accomplish that by doing a webinar. And um, you, you, you really do need to send, uh, have your affiliates then send people to the webinar, right? That's what you're basically trying to do. Um, when they send the targeted traffic, it's going to be your, your EPCs are actually going to be higher. And then what you're trying to do again, you do a pre-launch webinar, you're basically influencing product of the day. The reason that people do pre-launch webinars is yes, they're trying to get higher sales. But what they're really trying to do is they're trying to influence EPCs at the very beginning of the launch, right? So understand that. So a pre-launch webinar, what it does more than get sales, right? The, the, tar the, the traffic is going to be super targeted is they're going to send people straight to the sales page from the webinar, but they're going to send them with uh, knowledge of how it's going to benefit them, and it's going to influence their product of the day. And if you get your affiliates to send it to you, send you the traffic ahead of time, what you've done is you have really, at the very beginning, you have given yourself the highest possible EPC so that when people see it within the first day, the first half a day, they're going to say, wow, high EPCs, this is going to be something I, I can promote. Right. So 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 the pre-launch webinar, there's more to it than just sales. What they're trying to do is influence the EPCs. <clears throat> and you're going to be able to influence product today on JV's and Warrior Plus. Um, now, pre-launch webinar does take more time, um, but you're going to need to uh, you need to 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 to, to basically um, you're, you're 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 basically getting people to help you to build uh, a, the best possible light. Um, around your product right now obviously you can influence your epcs by your bonuses um you know th wh what's happening is when you put together a bonus page for your your affiliates um the traffic is not going straight to the to the sales page right and this is the most common way that people are influencing epcs and this is one of the reasons why when you look at the epc number you're not looking at a true number right um what you're set what you're what you're influencing here is you are basically showing people the EPCs, but typically people are sending people to bonus pages, right? So the traffic is never going straight to the sales page anyway. And you're decreasing the amount of traffic. And so what you're doing is raising the EPC because you're sending less traffic to the sales page. Some of the traffic is getting filtered by a bonus page. Um, most of that traffic is going to come from email. Um, very little is going to come from paid traffic. And a bonus page filters out unwanted clicks. That's basically what it does. So when you put it together for your affiliates, what you're doing is you're not just helping them sell. Yes, you're helping them to make more sales. What you're basically doing is you are keeping out unwanted traffic and you are raising your EPCs and your EPCs look better because the unwanted people, the tire kickers, the people who, are, who, who, who don't want anything to do with your product, they're typically going to stop at the bonus page. Does everybody get that? So if you get that, please put the number three in the question box. This is probably the most important thing that you want to know about EPCs. That's why you put together a bonus page. You put together a bonus page not only because it helps you to make more sales, but you put together the bonus page also because it filters out the unwanted clicks. And the unwanted clicks keeps you from having a lower EPC. Um, right, so Jim's question is, so you, you offer the bonuses before they get to the sales page. Okay, yeah, so what you're doing is you're giving the affiliates, you're putting together bonuses for the affiliates to use. And so what you're doing is the affiliates are actually going to send out a bonus page instead of sending them straight to the sales page. So, yes, you're going to see the bonuses before they get to the sales page. That's right. And so some people are going to get to the bonus page 
They might watch a video and say, ah, you know what, that's not for me, or I wasn't all that interested anyway. I'm going to just kind of click away. Right? You were keeping people, uh, uninterested people, from coming to the sales page. Okay, so when you're putting together a bonus page, um, you want to put as much detail on there as you can. Now, again, you might not you might not have, have, have all the time in the world. Um, a good bonus page can always turn the untargeted traffic into buyers, right, if you put it together right. Um, now, the best way to in, con, increase conversion is always going to be to include a bonus, um, but your bonus should always be relevant or complementary to the offer, right? So, so again, so don't, don't just put together bonuses for the sake of the bonuses. Make sure that they're relevant and complementary, and then do a pre-sell on the bonus page. So put together a video where you're pre-selling the product and the bonus. Um, so if you if you're if you're if you're doing software, right, do a demo. Um, if you're if you've got a members area, show the back office. Um, get affiliates to pre-sell by sending out the pre-sell or the bonus page, right? So again, get your affiliates to do this. Now, some affiliates will already have their own bonus page, but some affiliates are not going to do that because it's not their product, right? So they're not going to put that much, that much effort into your product. But that's why some of the time what you're going to do for them is you're going to give them a bonus page, right? You're going to give them a bonus page. Again, so how do you apply this, right? So what you want to do now is you can just go to MunchEye. You want to compare what you see on MunchEye with the JV page, and you're going to compare that with the stats you see in JVZoo. Now, again, JVZoo has the truest. It gives the most information, right? The Warrior Plus statistics are not necessarily going to give you um, the, the kind of intelligence you can look at so that you can tell what's really happening. If you look at a JVZoo, uh, JVZoo uh, a statistic, you look at the JV page, and you look at the listing in MunchEye, you're going to be able to look at your particular product category. You're going to be able to look at and apply this information so you'll be able to see what the EPC is really saying to you. We talked about the fact that uh, EPCs are influenced by your sales funnel. And what I want to do is I want to go to some real-life um, examples. And so what I'm going to do here is let's just go to MunchEye.com. And everybody knows that MunchEye.com is basically the place where affiliates go to find uh, products that they're going to promote within the Make Money Online or Business Opportunity space. Now, if you were working outside of that space, um, you would probably be looking or JVs would be looking in a place called JV Notifier, right? Um, and if, you, if, you're, if you're looking outside, JV Notify, sorry, <laughs> JV Notify Pro, right? So I'm going to go there. And this is the place where JVs go to look for offers that they're going to be promoting. Right again, they're going to be primarily outside of the Warrior Plus and the uh, and the and the JV Zoo world or the Zaxa world. Now you you're, you're going to find uh, you're going to find JV Zoo and Warrior Plus uh, offers in this area. However, typically on MunchEye, you're going to find JV Zoo and Warrior Plus. So if I were to go and we were to scroll through here. You're going to notice that there's the JV Zoo sign. You're going to see JV Zoo and Warrior Plus all through here. Right, those are primarily the offers that you're going to see here. Now there is a new uh, there is a new network called Pay.com, uh, put together by Andrew Darius, the person that put together the uh, the, the product Explaindio. Uh, he has a new network. It's not necessarily fully off the ground yet, but uh, it is available. So now, why is all this important? Why am I even talking about this? Because if you're gonna if you're gonna actually launch a product and you're trying to attract affiliates. You're going to want to place that offer or make it available on one of these websites so that people who go to promote products will be able to see it and decide whether or not they're going to promote, right? So if that makes sense to you, uh, please put the number one in the question box. Okay, Mer Stuart's asking the question, pay what? It's called pay.com, right? So let, let me show you what that is. It's called pay.com, and pay.com was actually at one time – Owned by Mike Phil Same, it used to be his network before he uh, before he uh, I think he went pretty much full time with Webinar Jam uh, when he started working with Andy Jenkins. Um, however, Pay.com had always been there, and it has been combined with a network that's uh, that used to be called JV Share. And I don't really know how much. Okay, yeah, if you actually if you type in JV Share, 
right? JV Share now redirects to Pay.com, right? So Pay.com has effectively become uh, what JV Share used to be, and it's a relatively new network, right? Um, so, so again, this is this is one that is again, it's it's kind of getting started right now, um, and they're not necessarily lots of offers there, but other people are starting to put them there. You will be able to use this as an alternative to both uh, both uh, JVZ and Warrior Plus. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go back to Munchai. Um, now, I'm showing you this because again, if you're if you're really looking to let's say create a product and you're going to want to ask affiliates to promote, you're likely to put your product here on munchai.com. And what we're talking about right at this moment is we're talking about EPCs as a influence by your sales funnel. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one offer here. And it's going to be by this person named Jai Sharma. Right. So I'm going to go to their listing. And I'm going to click their JV, their JV page. So we're going to go to their JV page. And this is where they're going to be listing all of the information that they want JVs to know before they consider promoting a product. Right? So I'm going to put this, uh, I'm going to put this URL where you can actually see it. Okay. And, uh, so Stuart is asking, can you check for future times on Munchai? Yes. Uh, in fact, if you go to Munchai, for the most part, we go back there. What you're going to see is you'll be able to see launches going out until all the way until December 31st, right? So you can actually see them. You can actually see them going on. So you can put your, you can list your launch there, um, um, however long you want it to be out there, right? And if you want people to see it. Uh, typically, what happens is uh, JVs are reluctant to say too much about their launch too far ahead of time, sometimes because they feel like somebody's going to copy their idea. So uh, so, so sometimes it, it, it isn't something that you're going to do too far ahead of time, right? <clears throat> okay, so let's kind of go back here. And so if we're talking about the sales funnel. Um, let's go and take a look at the sales funnel. And I want to start by talking about some of the things that we talked about in, when we previously just discussed the theory around the sales funnel. And what you're going to notice is that this funnel has a webinar software that's going to start at $47 at the point of the launch. Right. Now, the next, uh, the, the next upsell is going to be a premium version of that webinar system. Now, we don't have any information about that, but again, this follows the theory that we have been discussing. The first upsell needs to be something that if you look at it after you've seen the first up, after you've seen the first or the front end product, you should put together something as your first upsell that should be a no brainer to somebody who wanted the front end. Now, again, what you don't need to do is you don't need to give people um, a split product where, uh, where where they can't basically do what they need to do with just the front end product. You're going to sell the whole thing based on your front end. Now, again, we're talking about software right now, but this applies to information products. People should be able to get what you promised them on the sales page if they get your front end product. That is what your psychology should be. Now, when they see the upsell, that upsell should be directly related to your front end product. What should not happen is you should not have any incongruity between your front end offer and your upsell, right? It should be a no brainer. It should be so that the relationship is clear between the front end and the upsell while at the same time, when they buy the front end product, they should be able to get everything that you promised them. Okay, so so um, so so the, so the question is going to be is from Jim is what's the least amount of time before a launch to announce it on Munchai? Um, it really depends on the market or the niche, because if you have a close set of JV relationships, you can put the you can put your product on Munchai anytime, right? But if you're really to looking to attract affiliates that don't know you that would be interested in promoting a product like yours, you want to give it, I'm going to say, two to three weeks. 
right? If you can, right? In some cases, does it make, make sense to do that? Especially if you know you have JV relationships that are already going to be, uh, I guess, I guess excited about promoting your product and you're just putting it on munch eye again to attract some people in addition to that you don't know. Right. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, and, and so what happens is some people don't put it up there, uh, uh, un, until, I guess, until they're ready with everything. Right. Some people will put things up there just to get people to try to hold the date. So there are different levels of psychology that you want to apply based on how you want to use it. <clears throat> but we're talking about, so how can you influence the EPC uh, with, with your sales funnel? Well, if you can see here, what they're doing is they're saying, okay, you know what? We're going to be able to sell some of this first upsell because if people buy the front end, we're going to give them a premium version. Again, I don't know what the premium version is. We can probably find out what that is, and maybe we'll take a look at it. We can probably find out what it is. Uh, but, but what we're saying is that the relationship has to be very tight. It should not be uh, uh, kind, of a, kind of incongruous in any way, and it really should make sense to the person that if they buy the front end, they should automatically want the upsell. Right now, then there's going to be a second upsell sometimes. And basically what this second upsell is, we can already tell, right? This is a reseller. So basically what we're saying here is that, well, if you like the front end of the upsell, then more than likely you can then go and you can sell this to other people if you like it. So in other words, what you're doing is you're saying um, the, the people that buy this, they're probably going to want the second upsell also. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that these are all going to be separate offers. They're all going to stand on their own, but they are all tightly related. Now, again, I don't know what traffic send is, but it's probably some kind of how do you get traffic to a webinar, right? That's what I'm guessing it is. So, so, so again, all of this is very related, and that's basically what you want to do when you're going to put together a sales funnel, right? The first, the first upsell should be a no-brainer. The second upsell is typically going to be something that's going to be done for you, right? Now, in this case, what they're doing is they're saying, we're going to give you the opportunity to make some of your money back. And the third upsell here is going to be some kind of DFY. And the DFY here is going to be traffic. So in other words, you're not going to have to try to get traffic to your own webinar. We're going to help you to do that with whatever this offer is. Does that make sense? Is everybody with me so far? So what are you trying to do here? You're trying to make sure... That if one if the if your if your buyer makes one purchase, we're gonna make it we're gonna make it very easy for them to make the other purchases, and we're gonna make sure that the upsells are tightly related to the front end product. Right now, so let's take a look now at the let's take a look at the sales funnel. Maybe there might be the opportunity we might be able to see it. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to go to our affiliate link here. And, uh, and in some cases, uh, I, I think I might be able to be approved instantly. Okay, and I am. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm approved instantly. So it's possible that I might be able to see the other offers. So let me take a look at here. And I'm going to go to my approved products. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sort now for the current date and let's see. Okay, so I can see all of the upsells here, right? So basically, uh, I have this commercial version. This is the front end, right? So I can see now the premium offer. So let's take a look at the premium offer. What we want to do is we want to see if it is tightly related. So let's take a look at what this offer is. And so we're going to do here now is we're going to now see what, what is this offer, so basically, here's what the offer is. What they're basically giving you on the front end is, is the ability to do live webinars. On the back end, they're now going to give you the ability to do automated webinars. It's highly related, right? So you understand now what it means. What you're trying to do is you're trying to make it a no-brainer. In other words, hey, whatever it costs to do an automated, if I'm interested in doing a live webinar, well, certainly I want to be able to do an automated webinar, right? And so 
this offer is then tightly related to the first one. Does that make sense? Right? Closely related. That's right, Jim. So now let's take a look. Let's take a look at the, let's take a look at some of the other, let's take a look at the other upsell. Right? So let's take a look now at the reseller. Right? So basically now what we're going to do is we're going to now just take a look at the reseller. So they're going to limit the, limit the licenses to 500. So it's probably going to sell pretty well. And basically the reseller gives you the opportunity to sell the product at 100% of the profit. Right. So in other words, you get to you get to sell this, you get to use their sales pages, you get to send traffic to their sales page. And then instead of giving you an affiliate commission, they're going to give you 100 percent. Does that make sense? Right. So that's that's how these these offers are, are very, I, I'd say, very congruous. And what you're trying to do with a sales funnel, again, is you're trying to make sure that you get the people who are going to be interested in buying the upsell while keeping the offer separate. And let's take a look at the last offer here. Let's take a look at the last one. Okay, so basically, again, now this follows our theory, doesn't it? In other words, we have a DFY, we have a DFY opportunity inside of our funnel. So think about this. What you're basically doing is you're giving people some, you're giving people the opportunity to make their life easier in the front end. You're going to give them the no brainer in the second uh, upsell. And the third upsell, what I typically, what I typically like to see is that you want to give somebody uh, a DFY opportunity, something that they would typically have to do themselves and you're going to help them to do it. They chose to do this in the third upsell, right? Because they put the reseller as the second upsell, but it's all related. Right. So basically what they're saying is, well, hey, you don't have to drive traffic to your webinar. We're going to help you to be able to do that. We're going to do some of this for you. Right. So in other words, look at the headline here at the top. Important step to get the traffic to your webinars. Once again, very tightly related. What we are trying to do with our sales funnel is we if we get one sale, we are trying to make sure that we capture all of the other interest in what people want to do with that with that front end, right? Okay, so so any questions? Any questions now on how you influence uh, EPCs by your sales funnel? Right. So Stuart's question is, uh, can they buy the? Uh, uh, typically not. No. So you would not even see the upsell, right? You you wouldn't even see it. Right. So so if you it, right. Yeah. So when you when you put it forward, you wouldn't really even see that level of the product. So in other words, OK, so Jim's question is. Let's say that and you you really would want to structure your funnel this way. Right. So <clears throat> once I get to if I choose not to buy the premium. The, the funnel's going to end. Right. So in other words. When I click the no thanks button from this offer, I decide not to buy this. I'm not probably not going to see the reseller, right? I'm probably not going to see it. So, 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 so basically the only way that you're going to see this, this offer is if you, is if you purchase the OTO one and you probably won't see OTO three unless you buy OTO two. Now you, now it's quite possible that what I would want to do is I would still, and, and they probably are doing this. Let's say I click away from OTO1 and I decide not to take them up on this. I'm probably then going to be sent here, right? I'm probably going to be sent here to the traffic offer, right? Does that make sense? So, so I'll still probably see the third upsell, but not the, not the second one. What you're really trying to do with your upsells is you're, you're trying to make sure that the people that are going to be purchasing, that they're going to see related offers, and you're trying to make sure that you are getting all of the interest while they're there. Right? Yeah. So Stuart's saying uh, selective redirect. Right? Any questions on EPCs influenced by sales funnel? EPCs influenced by affiliate commissions, right? So how can we do that? And how does it make sense? And how, how do we see that here in this offer? Right. So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. Now, again, um, what we're talking about here is we're talking about percentage. So we want to make sure 
that the affiliates are going to make, um, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to make, um, quite a bit when they make a sale, right? So the, the commission here is going to be 50% on $47. So that's a good commission if you make a sale, right? If you make a sale, your affiliates make a sale here, they're going to make $23, right? So that's going to drive their EPCs very high. Right? So, so again, contrast that with an information product. So in other words, if I work hard to get a sale and I make a sale of this software and, or I make a sale of a product that costs $9 and I got 50% of that, then you'd see the difference, right? The EPCs are going to be way higher. So if I have to choose between two offers, which one am I going to choose? I'm going to choose the one with the higher EPCs because if I have to work if I have to work hard to get a sale and every click is going to bring me $23 versus uh, $4.50 or $9, I'm going to take the one that's going to be give me $23. Does that make sense? Is everybody with me on that? Does that make sense? So that's why you're really trying to drive your EPCs higher. You're trying to drive your EPCs higher because what you're trying to communicate to the affiliate is, hey, if you promote my product, versus promoting the other person's product, you are going to get more for your click. Is that so 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 again, making sure that the affiliates make enough when they get their front end purchase. Now, we could if we wanted to, we could give the affiliates um we give them 20%, right? We could give them 30%, but they're choosing to give the uh give them 50%. And that's so that again, the affiliate makes enough for all of their effort in promoting this software product. Right now, <clears throat> I want to show you one more aspect of this, and I'm going to now go here. Let's take a look at this. Let's go to find products. And let's go to the best sellers for the day. So if we look at the best sellers for today, what do we see here? We see the HQ webinar commercial is third, right? But now, HQ webinar third is third for what? Total numbers of sales, right? That's the that's the number of raw sales. Does that make sense? So in other words, if I were to count the number of sales, I, th then then HQ webinar would have the most. But do you think it matters if I make, let's say, 10 sales of a $9 product as an affiliate or I make 10 sales as a, as, of, a, of a $47 product as an affiliate? Does that make a difference? Does that make a difference to me as an affiliate? Well, of course it does, right? And so, and so the number that we want to look at here is not just going to be the number of sales. So, right, so Stuart says we want to look at total revenue. So let's take a look at total revenue. Now notice that HQ webinar is third here, but if we look at total revenue, right, what happens? Let's see what happens here. HQ webinar is then first. Right? So in other words, if I were to get traffic here, I'm more likely to make more money. Which do you think is going to be more uh more attractive to an affiliate? So when you're trying to design a sales funnel, and you're trying to design your affiliate commissions, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make sure that the affiliates are going to make as much as they can so as to attract them to your product. Yeah, so Stuart says they're going to make more money for the same or less amount of work, right? So, so again, you are trying to influence uh, your EPCs by making sure that your affiliates make a lot of money. Right? Does that make sense? Right? So, so, so again, you have a lot of influence over this. And if you can't make it up, let's say that your product is not going to be $23. Let's just say it's going to be $10. Well, what can you do? Right? We talked about this last week. Well, one of the things you can do <clears throat> is you can give the affiliates 100%. Why would you give them 100%? Do you understand now why? If your product is going to be ten dollars, you got to give them a hundred percent. Do you understand now why? Because who are you in competition with? Who are you in competition? Let's say that you launch your product today. Who are you in competition with for affiliates? Who are affiliates trying to choose between? 
Exactly. So Jupiter, so, so Jim says, I'm in competition between everybody else launching products. And so the only way that I can compete with them is to make sure that they're going to make a significant amount every time they send out an email for our offer, right? So they got to choose. I want to make sure I'm going to give them as much as they possibly can so that if they choose not to do a two webinar and they choose me, then I've got to make it worth their while, right? And, and so, and the only way we can communicate that up front is we try to communicate that up front with EPCs. Let's take a look at, at, uh, at uh, Jai Sharma's email. Right, so here's here's his email up his uh, his update. Right, what is he saying here? Right, did everybody see the text in in his JV email? What's he saying? Does everybody see that? What does that say? It says EPCs are what seventeen dollars. Right, seventeen dollars. And so what he's basically saying is that. If you're not promoting our product, you are missing out, my friend. That's what he's saying. Because if you, if you have the right kind of list and you send traffic, you're likely to get $17 for every click if you get people to our sales page. Our sales page is converting at earnings per click of $17. Does that make sense now? Is everybody getting the whole picture now of the EPC? So, so, so again, now, one of the things I want to really encourage you to do is I know you get a lot of email, right? But, but you should be on every, you should be on some of these, uh, some of the JV lists, right? Get, get on some of the JV email lists so you can start looking at email. Now I get, I mean, um, th this in, in one email uh, box, I've got 921 emails. I've got about 21,000 in another one because I like to look at all these things because they tell me what's happening in the marketplace. If you really want to know what's happening in the marketplace, Right. This is what you have to have. You need to have the JV email and then you need to look at their email copy. We're going to talk about that here in a minute, but you've got to have both. And you really also have to have the emails from the affiliates. Right. And we're going to show you that here in a minute. OK, now. So how can we influence uh, uh, how can we influence EPCs by email? Right? How can we influence EPCs by email? And once again, I'm going to take you back to this very same offer. Right? And I guess you can tell, right, that let's say that, let's say I don't know anything about the product, but let's say it's not even a great product. Would you say that so far this person is doing a, an awesome job at recruiting affiliates and making it easy for affiliates? So if you say he's doing a great job of doing that, put number two in the question box. Right. So, yeah, he is. He is. And again, I don't know. I don't know this person personally. I, I don't know anything about this product. I didn't promote it because I don't necessarily have people that purchase software. But at the same time, though, you can emulate what this person does in whatever you're doing in your product launch. Right. So 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 this is how you can influence your EPCs by email. Let's take a look a, a, a little deeper of a look. And. How, what can I do to help the process? We talked about the fact that one of the things you can do is you can give your, your person swipes, right? So again, what's he doing for his JVs? He's giving them swipes, right? So he's got a swipe here to pre-sell, swipes with various angles. Remember, we talked about that. Um, winning swipes, local marketing, affiliate marketing, video marketing, right? So he's got lots of swipes here to help his affiliate, right? And basically, what the affiliate is supposed to be able to do then is they can then take this, this information and put it in their email, but he has given them content to put in their email because who knows this product better than they do? Nobody, right? I don't care how good of a review you can do. You won't know it as well as the person who created it. And so what they did was they sat down and they, they wrote swipes for the people who are going to be promoting. Now, I think I might also have the email of someone promoting. Let me just take a look here. I'm going to try to find that here for you. I'm going to, I'm going to do this off screen. And I might even have um, someone who is promoting this product. And if I do, we will be in luck. Let's see if I have this here. Okay, let's see. Ecom Affiliate Sites. 
Okay, let's see if I can find it in here. Let's do HQ webinars. Okay, so 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 here here's a here's a web so here are a couple of, of people who are promoting this product, right? Here's one right here. Now again, once again, you, you're you're going to see uh, that you can benefit from having uh, your having some of these emails available to you and being able to look at them, right? So now here here's here's what one person did, right? Here's what another person did. I don't know if they use a swipe or not. Right, this is one person, and I'll I'll almost bet that this person used the swipes. Right, so here's what this person did. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at the swipe. All right, let's take a look at the swipe. Okay, yeah, see, very similar. Right, so so basically, um, this person and they were able to get into the, make it into the inbox. Right, I, I don't I don't even do that. I would never take a swipe, but this person basically took the swipe they got from here right so what are they what are they doing they are helping their affiliates to make more sales what does that do that helps their affiliates again to get uh to, to make more sales so that their epcs will be higher to do what to attract more affiliates who don't know them personally right so this is one of the ways that they are achieving this very high epc now let me kind of go back here this is how they're getting such a high EPC. They've gone through a lot of trouble to make this easy for the JVs to promote them. Right again, this is very possible for you to do with any launch. Right? You at this point, you now have enough information to make your launch more effective. If you just copied some of what what you've just seen here, you can make any of your launches more effective. Right by giving your 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 affiliates something easy for them to put in their emails, based on your knowledge of it, to help them to convert their buyers. Right now, now I personally do not use swipes, but that's fine. Right, but someone who maybe doesn't know the product as well, or maybe not do a review, they would then really benefit from having this information. Okay, EPCs influenced by pre-launch. EPCs influenced by pre-launch. Let's talk about that a little bit here. Now you'll notice then that what they have been doing is they've got a uh, they've got a pre-sell swipe here, right? So even before the launch starts, what are you trying to get your affiliates to do? Well, you want them to start promoting before the launch gets started, right? So you want to start talking to them when you want to start talking to them before the launch right so is that what is that what this person's doing right sure he's talking to them hey you know what it's going live today close to one hour right we're going to get started soon right again he's talking to them ahead of time to tell them to get in line and start promoting so everything that you do to get your affiliates excited about promoting ahead of time is going to help you and even if you what you've got to do is you've got to give them e emails in order to get started. Now, what we talked about doing was we talked about perhaps using some kind of pre-sale webinar, right? Some kind of pre-sale webinar. So let's take a look at that right here. Let's see, uh, let's see, I've got some. There, there is a, there's a, uh, there's another sheet here that I want you to see. There's one more thing I do want you to see. I looked at before and I thought, boy, very well done. Um, let's take a look at. Oh, it's email. It's email, right? Okay, so. <clears throat> Okay, so in the JV email, right? So in the JV email, so what's he got inside of the JV email, right? So, so I want you. I, this is really, this is really, uh, really important, right? So he's got all the links here, right? So what does he got here? A webinar, a webinar replay. That means then that he's already done a webinar to pre-sell the course, to pre-sell the software. Can you do a, a webinar to pre-sell your product? Of course you can. All you're really doing is you're trying to get a page set up for affiliates to send you traffic ahead of time so that people can see it so that when you open the doors, they'll already be excited about it. And you can do that through a webinar. Now, he's already got this thing loaded up on YouTube. Let's see what he's got here on YouTube. Okay, so, so again, you've got a special buy link from the webinar. All of these things are things that you can do. Right? All of these things are things you can do, and you're setting this up ahead of time. Now, one of the things I want to show you here 
um, is I'm going to go inside of the product creation uh, uh, product creation screen, and let's see here. Let me kind of bring I'll bring this right back here. Okay, so let's say we're going to do this on JVZoo. <clears throat> All right, what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to have a pre-launch page, and yeah, okay, here it is, right here. So basically, what you're going to do is you're going to click this button, and then before your launch, you're going to send people to a page, and this is where your webinar registration or your webinar is going to be. And when they come to this page, they are then going to <clears throat> be cookied, as your affiliate, your affiliates are going to be uh, are going to get credit, and then they're going to get an opportunity to see the webinar. They're going to get a chance to see the, the the product early, whatever it is. And you are going to get on the webinar, and you're going to pre-sell them the product. Does that make sense? Right, you are pre-selling them on the webinar. This is how you would do it. You're just going to send them to a page to register using the pre-launch URL, right? So again, that's where this comes from. Right, so this is all he's doing here is he is sending you to a pre-launch webinar. And that pre-launch webinar is, again, I mean, um, you, you don't have to be a super salesperson. What you're doing is you're just telling people what's really exciting about your product. And you can do that in a webinar. Okay, um, last thing is kind of making sure that you influence the EPCs with bonuses. Right, you can do this also. Right, and this this uh, this vendor has done that. We're gonna go inside here, and I'm gonna go all the way up here, and uh, basically, let's see, make my bonus page. Now, what what are they doing here with with by giving the affiliates a bonus page? Well, what they're doing are a couple of things. Number one, what they're doing here is they are giving their affiliates a bonus page so that they'll do what? Filter the traffic. Right, so so the traffic is going to be filtered, and hopefully, you, what they're doing is they're going to weed out the people who are going to be not interested in buying webinar software. Right, so what we're going to do, what will we do as an affiliate? Well, your affiliates, what they would do is they would let's see if I can get it here. They would get their link, and what they would do is they would then. Now, this is a script, by the way. Um, you know, I can I can show you this if you if you're if you're interested ever in where you get it. Um, but uh, but okay. So now what they have here is they have an automatic bonus page, right? So this bonus page is now coded with my affiliate link, and they made it automated. So now what am I going to do? I'm going to send people to this page. I don't have to do my own bonus page. And what have I done? I they have filtered me out if I'm not going to be interested. If you understand this correctly, you would then do this for your product. You would put together a bonus page for your affiliates so that you can filter out the traffic and then your EPCs will be higher to then, again, do what? Bring more affiliates who want to promote your product. So all you're trying to do here with these actions is you are trying to influence the EPC process. And you influence the EPC process by filtering out unwanted traffic, making the affiliates uh, commission higher, and bringing people who actually want to buy, and to make sure that your funnel converts people by keeping it very consistent. Right? So does, does everybody understand the big picture now? So if you understand the big picture on EPCs, why don't you put the number five in the question box? Okay, does the co cost of the offer dovetail with quality um, it should okay so so in other words I, I think what you have to do is 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 you, if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna um, if you're gonna have affiliates promoting then you 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 have to make sure that they're gonna make enough right you you have to make sure they're gonna make enough and and typically, um, information products in our in our circle, they're going to be undervalued, right? So people who 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 create software, they're typically selling it for less than it's worth. Um, but <clears throat> I think that this the, the pricing decision is subjective. 
I guess that's maybe the, the answer that you're, you're looking for. It's, it's, it's subjective. Yeah, you still need to know something about the product or the vendor, right? Because some people, I mean, I mean some people could sell a, sell a webinar software and I wouldn't buy it at two dollars. Right. I, you know, I, so so and again, I think I think as you're saying, um, uh, it's 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 all it's it's all about reputation. Right. And look, the fact of the matter is. And I, I've said this on a number of occasions that you you you, you sort of want to want to get you, you sort of want to be good at something. And I'm not saying that. I, you know, if I wanted to, I couldn't produce software, but I, I, I try to stick to what I know well. I could, I've had a number of people approach me about, well, do you want to create software together? And, and, you know, and, you know, we can go and we can get somebody to outs, we can outsource development, we can do all these things. And, and, and I'm pretty sure I could do it. But um, I, first of all, I don't know. I don't know anything about software development. And I guess I could learn, but I don't. I don't. I don't know it as well as I know what I know. And so, and so, I, I'm when somebody who is, let's say, a software person, comes and they're doing a, uh, and, and they're and they're doing what I'm doing, right? They're, they're doing. Let's say they're doing PLR. I'm 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 a little skeptical. Right. Um, so so I think I tend to, to kind of associate what someone does well with what they do well. Right. And I think that would be the case with most of us. If you're going to go to market with a software product, I think you've got to be partnered up with some people who are who are experienced and people who have a reputation for doing great software. Right. Otherwise. If, if if you're known if you're not known as a software person, it, it's it's going to be hard to command the the uh, a higher dollar amount, right? So 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 some of it is going to be reputation. Yeah, I mean people are always going to wonder if you're going to support the software a year from now. But you know even even if <laughs> I mean even if you support the software, right? Let, let's say let's say that you know you're dealing with an honest person. And they support the software, and it works. Um, th- th- there's a difference between somebody who knows how to lay out me- menus, somebody who knows how to make things logical, somebody who makes sure to knows they they have everything in it. And sometimes, if you're if you're if you're not that person, you're not that person, right? And and even if you partner with somebody, you know, so one of the partners has to know, hey, you know what? We should we should not put that in this menu. Or we should put this menu on the left side, and all that all that has to do with how the user is going to experience it. And sometimes, you know, we've all had the experience with software that works, but it's just not laid out logically, and we never use it. And so, I, you know, for all those reasons, um, I, I I I tend to try to get it from people who know what they're doing, even if I have to pay a little more for it. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna have to take a little longer to edit this one. And uh, <clears throat> and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little longer to edit this one, and uh, and then uh, this is probably gonna be up a little a, a little long. It could take me a little longer to get it back up, but I will get it back up after I have uh, have edited some things out of here. Okay, so thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night, a pleasant tomorrow. Take care.